When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. Hello, podcast fans. Adam Carolla here. I'm leading the fight against patent trolls who are threatening this medium. It's not about me. It's about the podcast you're listening to right now. If I go down, this show could be next. Visit fundanything.com forward slash patent troll for more information on how you can keep podcasting alive. Thank you and mahalo. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Oh, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game tape. Donuts. If you want to battle with either that you will like that world. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gal. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. Doing? I'm asleep by nine o'clock. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, that's not right. More stories, episode four thousand one hundred and two. It's amazing <laughs> how long we waited to put this one out. Brant Tobler on the More Stories podcast. Welcome to Fake Mustache Studios, my it man. Is, it is good to be here. You're the first person I think I've ever met from Wyoming. Yeah, you're probably not going to meet too many. Are you a cowboy? No, not it's at all. It's Cowboy State, right? It's Cowboy State, but that's about it. How's your knowledge of other states' mottos? Uh, Rhode Island. What's Rhode Island? Nothing. Maybe Midwest states that I've drove through, but why? Well, what is Rhode Island? The ocean state. Oh no, I would have, I would have never got that. That's weird. New Jersey. The Turnpike State. We're gonna do this for an hour and a half. <laughs> We're just gonna go through all the states, and I'm gonna quiz him. I'm only gonna get maybe three. I'm trying to think which ones I know. That might make it easier. How close was your closest neighbor in Wyoming? Close. Really? I live in a neighborhood. Well. N- n- not like this, but kind of like this, setup wise. Just like a regular, old yeah, just a regular right? five blocks. Wyoming, just like you got to run four miles to the next door neighbor's house. You know, I lived on a ranch for a while where it was like that, where there's nobody for fucking miles. Did you do ranch work? One day, worst day of my life. <laughs> what? What happened? Man, so we so we dressed up. You know, when they brand the cattle, the the worst day of my life. So we were just dumbasses, and we got cowboy outfits and went out there to do it, Why? and. Because we were fucking idiots, and we thought we were funny. So oh, okay. it was it was my buddy's, his was my other buddy's ranch, and he's like, "You guys want to come out and help us?" And we so we got cowboy outfits from like Goodwill, and we went out there. And uh, these cowboys are the toughest fucking guys I've ever seen. So we had to brand like calves. Calves are about maybe a hundred pounds. So we were two man crews. So the job would be like, so if it was me and you, you would tackle. We'd have to tackle this calf. They'd rope it, and then we'd tackle it. You would hold its head down, like in a headlock, and I would get the back legs. And I would hold the two back legs, and then I'd put my foot over its asshole, and then you would hold it down, and these cowboys would come Ooh. over, and then they would shoot it. They'd shoot a shot in its nose. They would burn its ant- its, its horns out of its head, and then, then it would castrate them, and then put the brand on them. So the, the reason like, I had to put my foot over the asshole is because the calf would shit all over you. And there'd just be blood squirting all over you. And these cowboys would just slice off the balls and, like, lick the blood off the knife and put it in their pocket and be like, next one. Just kicked our ass. We held on for fucking – because, you know, when all that shit's happened to the calf, they were just kicking and going crazy. Yeah, I would. We did it for, like, an hour. And then we're like, we need to take a break. And we fucking snuck to our car and got the fuck out of there went and got pizza. Were you traumatized by yeah, that? Yeah. It was just it was just blood squirting in your face, shit. They're making these awful noises. and What do they do with the balls? Throw them in a bucket and cook it. What? Yeah, for Rocky Mountain Oysters. That was like the big luncheon that we were supposed to wait around for, and we were like, nah, we're out of here. That's your prize. Yeah, yeah, that that was your reward. If you tackle these calves and wrestle a 100-pound steer to the ground, we're going to feed you balls. Yeah, and they, and they were just like, these cowboys were not joking. They're like, come on, and just fucking go, go, go. And we were like, man, we're pussies. We can't. <laughs> we're out of here. What was the name of the ranch? I was just a Jacobson ranch, just a big family ranch. Was it a big J on the brand? 
Yeah, I, you know, I don't remember what it was, but that and that's another thing. The hair just fucking that that burnt like Singing skin hair. just stinks. There's blood shooting on you. This is Shit. horrible. Yeah, it was awful. I was like, at least it's one stop shopping. They don't make the guy go like. Like <laughs> yeah. human beings are like, all right, come back in 10 days and we'll take care of your nuts too. Yeah, yeah, it's a one thing. Then the next time we did it on a different ranch, it was much easier because you just ran them down a chute and then you put them on a table and turned them. You just sat and drank beer all day and fucking, you felt bad for them, but it was so much better than it's that. It's easy to cut off nuts when you're drunk. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything. I just sat up and drank beer and fucking, we'd have to just like Wait, uh, they lay on a table, make them go into a chute. So they go in the chute and then you put them on a, they step in this thing that's like a table. And then this that just hard. turns. Yeah, it's awful. Tom Arnold was here, and he worked at a no thanks. Tom, Tom Arnold was here, and he worked at like a, a meat a meat place like that where they had to like. F- he said there was a chain that went around the animal's legs, and they fucking yank it backwards, and they hang it upside down. Yeah, it's, and I took shit on Twitter because I was laughing, but I was laughing at like the way he was telling the story. I wasn't laughing at the fact that they're fucking hanging animals upside down. Yeah, it's awful. It was. I'm telling you, it was the worst day of fucking. Anytime I complain about a shitty road gig or something, I'm like, I could be doing that shit. Or you could be the calf. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> or that Dude, even Brent, the worst. Yeah, burn his, why, what are they shooting his nose? Just like the medicine. What, medicine. <laughs> well, I don't know what. Trust me, I didn't know. Sh- I just did what I was told. Here's your, here's your penicillin. Yeah. In case you have bad balls. We don't want any infections when we lick the blood off our nose. <laughs> yeah, these guys. It's kind of gross, but. How old were you when you did that? Uh, I was probably like 20, maybe 21. It's like two years ago. Yeah, I wish. Uh, by the way, Brant Tobler's on Twitter. B-R-A-N-D-T. Brant Tobler. There's two T's right. in that whole name. That's right. I dig it. And he's wearing a Tyson Botha shirt, and he actually watched the fight, as did I. Uh, Franz Botha. It's amazing, back in the day, no matter who they put in front of Tyson, you're like, and maybe this is the guy. Well, I I was the opposite. I thought he was invincible. Both of the What was his nickname? Something Bull? Who, Botha? What didn't he have some crazy nickname? I don't even This You know, this shirt's probably like 25 years old. I think this was like a 1990 fight. Yeah, but you watched the fight. You're not like a hipster wearing an ironic. No, thing. no, I watched it. I, I, Iron Mike. I got a crazy story that it's, I, I don't even get to tell anymore because I broke into Tyson's house way before the hangover even happened. I'm sorry? Yeah, when I... Yeah. So it's a fucking kind of a waste of a story. But I... So when I first moved to Wyoming, from Wyoming to Vegas, I lived in Green Valley. And I was obsessed with just like meeting celebrities because I never really knew any celebrities. So I lived by Mike Tyson's house. So I would drive by Tyson's house every single day. And he had a, he had a big security guard outside with like cargo camouflage pants, a black shirt and like a gun. And this guy would just mad dog me every day. And, uh, so I would drive by every day. Like, I don't know why, like I thought fucking Tyson would be mowing his lawn or some didn't shit. He, didn't he know your past cowboy work? Yeah, no, he didn't just, know. Just I, your he, he wasn't too worried about me branding him. And, uh, <laughs> Brand, Mike so, Tyson to cut his nuts off. Yeah. So then eventually, Apparently somebody did. Eventually that guy wasn't, uh, wasn't there. And I kept driving by and driving by. And then one day there was a for sale sign out front. And I was like, fuck it. And at the time I was working for a professional gambler. So I always like had like a hundred thousand dollars cash on me. What? So in my head, I was like, I'm just going to jump this wall. And then if anyone sweats me, I'll just tell them I'm like looking to buy the house. It's a dumbass plan of like a 23 year old. Yeah. But if you have a hundred grand cash on you, how do you yeah. carry a hundred grand cash? Well, just in cargo shorts and shit. I try to keep most in chips and, and, uh, and like tickets, but trust me, once I knew the power of just pulling out a wad of money, I used it to my advantage. One time I was in an elevator with Jessica Simpson and her mom, and I get the height of Jessica Simpson's fame, and she's like, who are these guys in the elevator? And I just fucking pull out this wad of money, because I you know, keep like your business cards in the middle, and I was just talking to my friend, and then the second... You know, the second people see like a lot of money, then they never sweat me. Did so, she actually say out loud who are? Yeah, yeah, right in the elevator. Like, who, who are, are these guys, guys in, in there? Elevator? Yeah, just Who's talking about you. Just fucking awful human being, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> like we weren't bothering. I mean, just we didn't. We weren't who bothering are these guys her. Guys in this elevator. So, uh, so anyway, so I go by Tyson's house, and then so I jump the wall. And then I'm, so I'm like in Tyson's compound. It was like these huge walls and everything. So I go to the back doors and I fucking figure out how to get in the back doors. So I go in Tyson's house, but I'm scared, you know, and, but yeah. most everything's gone. But when I'm in Tyson's house, I hear this beeping sound and I like freak out and I take off and I go home. Well, I get to my house and then I'm laying in bed that night and I hear the same beeping sound and I'm like, oh man, that's just like when the fire alarm, you know, you're 
extinguishers out of batteries and it makes that annoying beep. So I tell my roommate, hey, tomorrow we're going to go to Tyson's house. So he's like, all right, let's do it. So we, we go, we get like disposable cameras. This is how long it is, how long ago it was. We get disposable cameras, we jump the wall, we get in Tyson's house and we're in there and we're like, holy shit, man, we got to steal something to prove we were like in Mike Tyson's house. But pretty much all the small stuff is like gone, you know? So we're walking around, opening every cupboard, every door, huge, huge mansion, right? So we get like the... We get, like, the title to his Mercedes. His Mercedes is in the garage. We get, like, some Versace pillows. And we're in and we're in this, uh, we're in his, like, TV room. And he's got, like, a flat screen and these couches and everything. And then there's an ottoman sitting in the middle. And I'm like, yo, we should take this ottoman. We could sell it for, like, 1000 2000 bucks Because I was like, that's a Versace ottoman. My roommate's like, what are you talking about? You don't know what fucking Versace is. I'm like, I swear to God, that's Versace because it had, like, the face. So as I bend down to pick up the ottoman to look at the bottom to see, like, the Versace tag, when I pick up this ottoman, a fucking VHS tape falls out like it was hidden in there. And me and my roommate look at each other like, holy shit. This is like a hidden fucking tape in Mike Tyson's house. He's going to be raping a white girl or something just awful, right? So we're like, we're going to be fucking rich. We grab the fucking tape up, take off, run to a house, find a VCR. And obviously, since I'm not rich, it was... uh, just it's your basic every Mike Tyson interview. He's like in Zeke Cavarucci jeans up to his belly button, no shirt, just talking about how he hates white people for like 20 minutes while he's making a video game. So I used to tell this crazy. So then the rest of the summer, I would take girls to his house because he had a big pool and like a grotto and a slide and everything. But it was so hot in Vegas in the summer that water was good. So I mean, it was hard to talk a girl into going to Tyson's house. Did they have to hop the fence? Yeah, too? but once you did, we'd have to help him over and shit. And then, but once we got in there, we'd have. There was a there the the place was surrounded by like fifteen foot walls, but there was a way. There was like a back little gate thing that you could get in because chicks can't climb walls that high. But for that whole summer, we just partied at Tyson's house. So it was like the greatest story ever. This is amazing. Then the fucking hangover comes out, and now I'm just another fat comic with a beard that broke into Mike Tyson's house. Kind of fucking counterfeited my whole story. <laughs> first of all, you're not fat. Secondly, well, thank you, but first, and it was it's a great story. Yeah, yeah. And when that I got news for you, when that VHS tape fell out. I would have the exact same. Oh my god! We thought it was. We thought we were like, are we going to get a plane? Are we going to get a boat? <laughs> we're like, we're get a us? fucking boat. We can land a plane on. We were like, <laughs> it's fucking. We thought, and it was like, an aircraft carrier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, I'm from Wyoming. We don't have a lot of aircraft carriers. So we, me and my buddy are just looking at each other like, we are going to be so fucking rich. There's two kind of kids, and you're growing up. I said it a couple podcasts ago, but everybody would just have to fucking chill and hear it again. There's two kinds of kids when you're growing up: kids that can hop fences, and kids that. Fuck it up for everybody. Yeah, I was a fence. I was a monkey. There oh, wasn't of a course. Fence 15 feet. Couldn't do any barbed wire, obviously. But then yeah. you learn later, like, oh, just put your jacket over it. Yeah. But, like, there's always that one kid at the top of the fence, like, it ripped my pants. Help, guys. Yeah, and you're right. You leave that kid. Yeah, that's that, you, you stop do. hanging out with that kid about eighth grade. And you leave him on that fence. <laughs> yeah. I was a fence climbing fool, but I never broke into goddamn Mike Tyson's house. That's amazing. Yeah, it was it was a it was crazy day. I mean, we were in there forever what if too. If he just comes back, like I, I forgot my VHS. Oh, shit, we would have been dead. We would have been dead. Obviously, I mean, he would have killed I'm us. I'm still bugging out that you had a hundred grand cash on you because I did a gig once. I think I was in Phoenix, and I asked the club owner. He wanted to add a show. And I said, yeah, it was a long time ago, like at the Tempe Improv, and they wanted to add a show. And I said, if you add a show, you got to pay me in all cash. And I had a door deal. And it was, for some reason, it was crazy. It wasn't because of me. It was like some weird event happened yeah, next yeah. door. And I got six grand cash. And getting on the airplane from Phoenix to L.A., like you don't know how big money is. Once you get up around a couple thousand, not like I, it doesn't fit six yeah. grand. I can't imagine a hundred thousand. No, you could. Six grand doesn't fit in your but pocket. But when you, yeah, no, you can, when you rubber band it, but a, a perfect example of that, and I've, I've told this story before about how douchey I was, but so I'm like 23. I've never had more than like $800 to my name and I start this job. Now in the beginning of this job, you kept the money with you 365 every day, all day. And, uh. So Just, uh, working for the gambler job. Yeah. So when I get into that too, when I met chicks, I would pull out this wad of money, you know, just out of my right pocket, and girls would be like, "Oh my god, how much money is that?" And I would always say, "If you guess within a hundred dollars, I'll give it to you." And chicks don't know how much money is, so they'd be like, eight hundred and forty-three dollars. 
And then I would just hand them the wad of money, and by the time they're like four thousand, they're just looking at me and I'm like it's a wrap. And I, <laughs> I mean, it was just such an easy. I like so far. We're about eight minutes in, and uh, three separate times you went. Chicks don't know about climbing. Well, chicks don't know money. Well, they don't right? know chicks about don't know. that. You got three separate. That's three like, things. Man, chicks don't know. Chicks money. don't. Chicks don't know about branding cattle. Chicks don't know about jumping fifteen foot walls, and chicks don't know how much. 10,000 cashes probably in a wad. I thought you said 100,000. No, I always had 100,000, but at this point, so I would keep 10,000 and like around 10,000 in my front right pocket. It has to be all hundreds then. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. Like if I was at Arby's, always hundreds. And the oh, chick would be like, Wait, the what? chick would be like, we only take hundreds and I would just fan it out and be like, it's all I got. And they would just fucking look at me. It was such a powerful thing. And I would, like I said, I was such a douche. But why were you doing? Well, because I was just a kid, and it's just like now that twenty-year-old would do. Now that I tell the stories, like who fucking pulls out ten thousand dollars in Arby's and fans it out? I'll tell you exactly who. A guy that worked his way. Most people are waiting tables at that age. You somehow hook up with a degenerate gambler with a hundred grand (laughs) cash on you at all times. I don't think there's a twenty-year-old in the world that wouldn't pull that. And if I think the douche is the guy that wouldn't pull it out. Yeah, I, I, it would be six dollars and fifteen cents. Oh, jeez, can you break a hundred thousand dollars in hundreds and chips? Do you guys take chips from? Caesar's? Yeah, yeah. Here's a twenty five thousand dollars chip. You take that. I think, well, I'll go ahead, Matty boy. I think as soon as like I was, I don't know, I don't know I was eight, seventeen, eighteen, and I had saved like ten grand in the bank, I went and took it all out in hundred dollar bills and and had them, you know, put it in the in the stack. Yeah, the ten thousand dollar. You know, Where it says ten thousand, ten, yeah. ten grand on the, you know, with the, with the band around, yeah. yeah, just just because, just to have it, and you know, I'd that was like your go-to move, and he's a Brant's apologizing for it. Yeah, I'm, I, I was such a dick that like I was like ten grand, boom, went right to the bank. It was like, you, <laughs> can I have it? And I, they actually made me wait. They said, no, we can't give it to you. We come back tomorrow. For a, one, an agent I had, like my first agent actually, he had like something happened. It was like an emergency in his family, and he wanted to take. I think it was like six grand he wanted to take out of the bank or something like that. It was like he needed the money right then for – like something like his dad was ill. It was something really he needed the cash right away. It wasn't like for anything stupid. And the bank said like, well, there's a $5,000 limit. And he goes, well, I've been banking here since I was 16 years old. I'm 50 years old. I really need the money. And the bank goes, well, you can't. You have to come back tomorrow. And he goes, no, I need it now. Yeah. Cause some, it was, I definitely know it was an emergency of some sort. It wasn't phony or anything. And they wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. And he goes, I've been banking here for 25 years. I really need the money. They said, no. He said, how much money do I have in my account? And they said, $35,000. He goes, I'd like to close my account. So instead of giving him the guy yeah, six yeah. grand, they had to give him like 35000 He closed his fucking account just because they wouldn't give him six grand. But then they, but they gave it to him in a cashier's check. <clears throat> They probably had to give it to him in cash because I don't know where he would cash it. Yeah, cash if you need like uh, something in a hurry. Well, that was what's funny about that whole world. It was so cash and it was all cash always. And so my boss is millionaire. All right, walk us through who the pro. uh, You don't have to name names, obviously, but you worked for a pro gambler. So I'm guessing like you had to sit at a slot for like an eight hour shift. No, 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 not at all. So my job was I was a sports. I worked for sports gamblers. So I had. So I had a Nextel back in the old Nextel days. So then my area was like center strip, and then I'd have like a hundred thousand. And you know, I'd try to keep most of it in chips and and tickets, not cash, because you know you didn't. I ended up getting robbed, and all kinds of bad shit happened. But you always wanted to keep the cash at the minimum. So my bosses worked out an office, and they were betting online, like sportsbooks.com or whatever. And then we're on the street, like four of us. And then there was other guys that were doing it too. So then I had to like beat their guys. So then they'd come across and be like, hey, bet the Bulls minus three at the Venetian. And I would run down the Venetian. So and what it, would happen probably for the listener, what they don't know is I'm guessing Brand Tobler at Brand Tobler, B-R-A-N-D-T, Tobler. It, what I'm guessing would happen is like they would wait for the line to change like a point. No, we would be the ones that change the lines. Whoa, this is some boss. So we were the ones like – so – so. uh at the height of it, we were the biggest hockey gamblers. We had the the smartest hockey guys. So we would, so like if you walked in, they would be like, you know, you're Jay Moore. You could bet whatever you want. But if I walked in, they'd be like, I always had a limit. So let's say we knew something happened. Let's say we knew Roethlisberger wasn't going to play. So I'd go in there and I'd pop him on the other side and then I'd pull the guy over. And so I can only get like, what does that mean? Pop him on the other side. I'd bet whoever they were playing. Let's say the okay. Steelers are playing the chiefs. Right, so so the we chiefs. knew Roethlisberger was out. So I'd go but over you know before, anybody else before the, then that was the key to running. So I'd go in and I'd say, Hey, give me the chiefs for 30,000 or whatever my limit was, you know? 
And then they, so then they'd give me the ticket and then I'd pull the supervisor over and I'd say, Hey, you might want to take that game down. There's probably something, you know, Roethlisberger might play and they go, okay, thanks. So I still get my bet, but then that discourages someone from like you coming in and being like, Oh, this is Jay Moore. And you could be like, I'll take 250,000 on the chiefs. And they'd be like, Oh, he's a celebrity. He just bought, he wants that. So it would protect him or like a whale or something. Cause like if, if I knew you at the height of my gambling, if we ever had like a fixed game or something, I would use you to go in there and say, "Hey, Jay, go in there." They just think, they know you have money; they would think nothing of it. And I'd say, "Go game. pop them." Like a game that you knew. Yeah, yeah. Such as. But that's that was so rare that happened. Like, Can you I give it without legal ramifications. Can you you give know, I'll t- I tell you the my favorite story just to put it into perspective. The one time, like, so I didn't. You know, when a game's fixed, they don't tell a lot of people. But there's just certain stuff, and I don't know which well, they game. They have to tell somebody, otherwise there's no reason to fix it. Well, yeah, but I'm talking, if you have a game fixed, you would never, you try to not tell anybody because right. then it's just like free money for everybody, mm-hmm. or that's when everything goes. So I never knew when stuff was fixed except for one time, which I'll tell you about in a second, but I could tell by the urgency of the play. So they would go, hey, bet the Steelers minus four if you see it anywhere out there. Just walk around, see if you catch it. Then they'd go, hey, Steelers minus three. I'd see it at the Venetian, go pop it. They'd go, Steelers minus two, but sometimes they just go Steelers, bet it wherever, whatever it was. And then I knew that it was something important. So then I'd pop it for like 2000 on my own, put that in my pocket, and then I'd bet it for 50000 for them. But the best story I have is we knew uh, an agent who, whose client was singing the national anthem for the Super Bowl. And he told us that they pre-recorded the national anthem. And no one really knew that. So the sports books all had up a line saying over under how long the the national anthem would be, and we knew the answer. So we now you have to manipulate it. You can't just go crazy and bet you know you know a million dollars and they'll say it's like the stock market. Those guys that I don't do stocks, but what I imagine is you you phony it up. So I'd bet ten thousand on one side, and then I'd come back the other side like four thousand ten. So then by the end you make a big push, or that that'd be the time I would call you and say, hey Jay. Go in here and just pop this for like 20000 if you can. So for that day, now we had to trust the agent, which was scary. But that day we had most of our money was on the national anthem. We didn't even fucking care about the Super Bowl. Wow, that is crazy. So there's stuff like that, like which and- is the great about Hollywood is like you could know, you know, like if you know somebody like, like I'm a Bronco fan, so I went to the Super Bowl. But if I knew, you know, I know some athletes, not really football players, but someone could tell me, hey, you know, we're going to – you can bet. Is it going to be pass or run first play? Is it going to be – you know, the one I always wanted is, like, a lot of teams have a trick play, so you can bet, will there be more than two passes thrown in a game? Two different guys throw a pass in a Super Bowl. Yeah, it's so like a running back takes a Yeah, so if you know – if you know anyone on any team and they're like, yeah, in the game plan, we plan on running this – you know, shit could happen. It could be a bad snap on that or an audible, but in the gambling world – you just look for small advantages, but that would be like a big, big advantage. So, so how much money did you win on the long national anthem? Well, I probably only won like seven, eight thousand because I. But my bosses just got they killed it because you know I was the bottom of the totem pole. So well, I'd like to be that kind of bottom of the totem. Yeah, yeah, pole. no. At the time, I mean, polar, I was like pole, polar, to walk with seven grand on a, a yeah, damn song. Yeah, I remember one time we bet the shit out of uh, the time the girl tried to. Uh, qualify for the tournament do you remember that I forget, like michelle we michelle, we yeah. blasted that so bad but then one time we had it because you knew she was going to we know we knew she won it because oh, okay. we had well, golf guys were she kind of 14 I think. yeah, yeah but, but it was a big but we killed that but one time it worked in our disadvantage because we knew a lot of caddies and one time the caddy told us uh their guy had food poisoning he said he's gonna probably he's gonna play but he, he probably will just drop out if he you know doesn't start feeling better he's gonna start the round so they back well. They do it still. There's just matchups. You can bet like me versus you. So we fucking bet the shit against this guy that had food poisoning. That this caddy told us he had food poisoning, and the fucker went Michael Jordan and played through a sickness and stuck it in our ass for God knows how much that day. Because on those ones, you think you know. Because I've had food poisoning, I couldn't even walk. So when they told us that, we were like, I remember just sitting around with my guys, and they were like, "Yo, food poisoning." He, this guy's you can't walk eighteen holes. Yeah, he's gonna poisoning. be fucking dead. And he and I and the caddy didn't lie to us. You could tell he was sick, and they made a big deal out of it. But uh, I mean, stuff like that. Then and you're is just, the caddy telling you like, "Put your bet down." Or yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you know we take care of people like the caddy. Yeah, yeah. 
give him. So a if anyone came with any information, so did you, you know, ever go to the caddy and go, yeah, thanks for the tip, a hole. No, I didn't. I, I didn't wasn't the guy that dealt with them, but uh, on that one, I think he felt as well, you know he hates it too because he knows he's going to get money. That that cost him probably a free roll of ten thousand dollars. You know, if we made, oh if, yeah, because the caddy probably yeah, so he was probably the maddest the one. He probably pro- like, boy, sure is hot. Out <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. I'm dizzy. Are you dizzy? <laughs> he's like a hundred yards out. He's I like I the squirts. I don't feel yeah. good. Don't you dehydrate? Hit the Everybody three started. iron, and the golfer's like from ninety yards. Yeah, just fucking yeah, hit, hit the, the three, three wood. Iron. Yeah, <laughs> the iron. Hit, you know, here's the tee box. Here's your wedge. Yeah, your depth perception's way off. You had that bad halibut last night, bro. Yes, here's your tee. He doesn't tell him it's got like spoiled eggs yeah. in it. One of those golf balls that explodes. Ice tea, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, just feed the guy whiskey all day long. Go to jmoore uh, dot com. Click the Amazon banner. Uh, all the money. A lot of comics. Do you have an Amazon banner? Yeah, all but it's comics. useless. Why is it useless? What's the name of your podcast? The Thirty One. The Thirty One. So everybody, right now, go to the Thirty One. And go help out Brant Tobler and click That's his right. Amazon banner when you're done hitting my Amazon banner at jmore.com for crying out loud. That's right. Buy, buy a bunch of shit. I don't uh, use any of this money, Brant. I put it all, I set up this thing with my uh, business manager for all the Amazon money from jmore.com. Instead of going to amazon.com, just click jmore.com, hit the Amazon banner. All the money that I get to kick back from Amazon is direct deposit. I got two sons. So all the money goes to their college it's an awesome. fund. So I don't ever have to contribute to their college fund. And I think it'd be kind of cool. Like when these kids graduate college, if they ever do anything of merit, if they're athletes or something, be like, I put that fucking kid through college. Yeah, that's awesome. And it makes it lighter on me, obviously, and I can just uh, buy expensive cigars. <laughs> but one guy emailed me. Did I tell you this, Manny Boy? Some guy emailed me and goes, I'm not using your Amazon banner just because you said the thing about sending your kids through college. I think it's a little – he said it was like condescending – and like, like you put yourself, be- you trying to make yourself look better than everybody else. I'm you, like, I'm you, just being honest, and I think it's cool. You never told, you never told me this, but in the back of my head, I knew there was going to be some fucking asshole that was going to send you an email like that. I was like, how is that negative? I set it up no, for no, my kids. No, no, it's not. No, not you. To right. the guy, and I was, right. and I, we emailed back and forth for like a week. I go, well, then don't use my banner. Go use him, 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 or him. I fucking knew it. I knew it. And the guy goes, well, don't you think? And it was like this long explanation. And then the fo- and I wrote him back. I go, well, I think it's pretty cool. Like, I'm not going to buy myself a Vespa. Like, it's yeah, going yeah. to a kid's education. I thought it was just kind of a layup as far as common sense. Like, because you have your options of banners to use. Right. For Amazon. No, I think it's, yeah. But, but I, I'm, I think it's funny because as soon as you, you knew it, right? I was like, some fucking prick is going to send you an email. To go you got on. a good prick detector. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound right at all. Did it? <laughs> Grant Tobler has a good severed balls detector. Yeah. Uh, go to jmore.com, hit the Amazon banner, and I will read what you bought on the podcast. Like our man Bruce D. You know Bruce D. I know Bruce. Bruce D., hey, Jay, I was contemplating buying a hideously expensive and pretentious cordless vacuum cleaner for my house. Normally, I may have clicked through to Amazon through another podcast's website. I haven't read this yet, so this is kind of cool that he wrote this. However, I've been mowing my lawn while listening to more stories with John DiMaggio, and I decided that I needed to let my jizz flow right down to that cyclone technology and click through your site. So here's to the Voice College Fund while um, bashing swimmers in a powerful vortex. <laughs> it really works on carpet and bare floors up on occasion, too. Signed, Bruiser, Bruce D. Uh, Bruce D., uh, that was really cool because I didn't realize that was actually going to be the content of your message. I was, uh, you saw me yeah, yeah. dialing around. I'm like, oh, fuck, here's one. So, yeah, instead of going to Amazon, just uh, put jmore.com up on your toolbar and click that anytime you want to go to Amazon. Uh, quick break, and then we're going to come right back with Brant Tobler. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, email me what you bought, and I will read it on this podcast. While you're there, browse, buy some T-shirts, wear them to my shows. Better yet, wear a jmore T-shirt to somebody else's show. That's straight up gangster. Wear your Moria shirt to some other headliner show. That's cool. And you can also see all my stand updates at jmore.com. All my shows are meet and greets, and I really look forward to meeting you guys. If you ever looked around at men who wear their button down shirts untucked, it's a classic look, but the shirts available are just too long and always look sloppy. It should not be this difficult to find the right fit, but it is. Well, untuckit.com has solved this problem made exclusively for men who wear their shirts untucked. Untuckit shirts are designed to be worn untucked at the perfect length. Research shows a clear preference for a shirt to be long enough to comfortably cover the belt buckle, but short enough to keep a portion of the pant pocket exposed, falling right in the middle of the fly. 
With some innovative design changes and a unique sizing chart, Untucket shirts will fall at the perfect length no matter what your size is. Untucket shirts are endorsed by GQ and worn by NHL star and New York Ranger Brad Richards. Untucket shirts are proud to be made in America. So visit Untucket.com and use the promo code MORE, M-O-H-R, for 15% off all purchases. The right shirt can make all the difference. Untucket.com offer free shipping. So go to Untucket.com and buy the first shirt designed to be worn untucked at the perfect length. Untucket.com. Quick, convenient, and most importantly, easy to use. That's how I would describe Stamps.com. It will make your mailing and shipping a breeze. With Stamps.com, buy and print official U.S. postage using your computer and printer. There's nothing to learn. Stamps.com will give you a digital scale. It automatically calculates exact postage for any letter, any package. They'll even help you choose the best class of mail to get your mail there on time for the least amount of money. Then drop your mail into any mailbox or hand it to your mailman. You're done. You'll never have to go to the post office again. Trust me, mailing and shipping has never been easier. That's why I use Stamps.com. It's the best. Right now, use my last name, more M-O-H-R, for this special offer. No risk trial, plus $110 bonus offer. That includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. That's a lot of letters, ladies. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in more M-O-H-R. Stamps.com. Enter more. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Jason Ray noticed a blue birthmark had appeared on his forehead in the shape of the Geico Gecko. Jason felt compelled to switch his car insurance to Geico and save hundreds of dollars with great discounts. By nightfall, the birthmark had disappeared. Jason's wife, Jeannie, thinks it was probably just blueberry jam from breakfast. Jason prefers to believe otherwise. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Brand Tobler, anytime I ask a comic if they've had jobs before they did comedy, you'd be surprised at how many just go, yeah. yeah. And I have to like <laughs> fucking drag information out of people sometimes. Waiters and waitress. Uh, well, you were a waiter, obviously. No. God, Never? No. That's the only job I ever had was that. I got that job when I was like, it's funny, I, I always Which job? the gambling job. If I Dillard's. Oh yeah, but that was that was before that was when I was like nineteen. But when I did you start doing comedy? Uh when I was like twenty six. See I started doing comedy I was gonna do it in Phoenix but I chickened out and then I started a little bit in Vegas and then I had like management, but then they would try to send me to like Wisconsin to feature for like four hundred dollars. I was like, I make five thousand dollars a day, I'm not fucking taking these shitty gigs. I've been in Mike Tyson's water slot. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I got a VHS tape of Mike Tyson <laughs> wearing Joey Buttafuoco's pants. That's I don't what need I was... this shit. <laughs> what is, Dillard's is like Kohl's. It's like a department store. Yeah, Dillard's is where it all started. Well, what your hustle? Yeah, for sure. Well, it started at Sports Fan, a store next door, and then I got fired from there for uh, <laughs> why? Why? Well, I, I at the time I was like, uh, I thought I was. I, my first job was for this Parkway Pizza. <laughs> which was this pizza hut in Wyoming? Yeah, but the, these guys, Big these Parkway. like five Italian dudes, <laughs> just sh- I swear that they were witness protection because hey, hey, they showed hey, up. Maddie, you want over? <laughs> hey, 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 hey no. you want over? You want over the pizzeria? <laughs> what do we call it? Oh, hey. Forget what we're gonna call it. Where are we gonna put it? Hey, I don't Brooklyn, know. Brooklyn, Bronx, uh, nah, Queens, no. Staten Island, uh, Jersey. Yeah, there's a lot of them there. Already. What are you thinking? What are you thinking, man? Uh, Wyoming, maybe. Oh, Mr. Wyoming hey. fans, hey. let's fucking get after it. What do you think? Hey, I know this kid, Brent. He could work for us. Hey, Brent. He could work for <laughs> us. He's a good kid. I heard Brent about Tobler. Brent. Yeah, yeah. Tobler, right? This Tobler. kid been in Mike Tyson's fucking house. Make your <laughs> shoes look like fucking mirrors. Slid down his slides. <laughs> Slid down his slides. Oh, you know Brent. Yeah, yeah Brent. The fucking yeah. crazy kid. He's got a hundred years large on him all the time. He's crazy. Fucking money, this kid. This kid. No belt Walking nothing. down Chips, the fucking tickets. strips. It's fucking straight. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Little fuck, he's a nut. Ever seen this kid climb a fucking 15-foot wall? <laughs> like a fucking gazelle, Matty. This like guy just jumps. Gazelle. This guy just jumps. He jumps. You he he doesn't use fucking... his fucking hands. No, i never seen him use his hands. You ever use your hands, Brent? Never. Used... What did never. I just say about his hands? Uh, doesn't even use his hands. Like a fucking, fucking gazelle. Fucking guy whacks off with his fucking feet. By a pit bull riding a lion. That's how he fucking jumps over the goddamn wall. I'm oh, sorry, Brent. What were you saying? Uh, that was <laughs> incredible. Uh, no, what was the name of the pizza? Bar? I forgot halfway through. Uh, me and Matty Boy's bit. Parkway Pizza. Parkway. Hey, call it Parkway Pizza. Hey, Parkway Pizza. Sorry. So these these Italian you got dudes fired <laughs> from the Wyoming pizza place. That's other level skill. Yeah, dude. yeah. Well, I was like 17 at the time, but uh, I like how all 
things you've done that you think are wrong in your life, you just hang an age next to it as yeah, like yeah, equal I mean, fired equals twenty. Hey, I was fucking twenty six. Well, what, what do you want? Really do, right? I was nineteen, bro. Bro, I was seventeen. <laughs> what do you want? Who? Everybody gets fired at seventeen from the fucking pizza, Parkway Pizza. That's right. I mean, Every everyone, st- everyone that worked with me, they got You're fired. The <laughs> You're like, man. You know what? I was fucking thirty, bro, so I got fired, yeah. man. I'm not gonna feature. I'm twenty two. Yeah, so I worked there. <laughs> for, Sorry. Uh, so anyway, I, I'm trying to even know where I'm at. So, oh, so I started so Dillard's, and then next door was Sports. Oh no, yes, yeah, so I worked and at Sports Van. That was Parkway Pizza. Sports Van, which was a sports store, which is the greatest. Uh, so it's just like jerseys, hats, and everything. So I was working there, and That's then I started what I called the Malfia. Like I was the fucking kingpin of the mall. And then so I would trade out shit. From, this is a movie, by the way. From well, this should yeah. be a movie. Well, I, I wish the it was. Kingpin of the Mall, the Mafia. So I would trade out shit in every, you know, I couldn't get jewelry or like puppies or anything, but like <laughs> I could get, <laughs> I could get like shoes or food or movies and all that. So I'd trade out shit throughout the whole mall. But then of course, eventually I got caught. And then uh, the best part about getting caught was I got caught like December like twenty second. And they were like, uh, well, you're fired, but we don't have enough time to train anybody. So we need you to work through Christmas and then do the do the returns. And then you're actually fired. So in my head, I'm just sitting there like, oh, of course. I'm so sorry I did this. But in my head, I'm like, it's fucking Christmas for everybody. <laughs> because I knew, you know. But then the hard part was so, and I love kids. So kids would come in. I'd try to hook them up with hats and shit. But then their parents would drag them back in and be like, why does my kid have a brand new hat? He doesn't have any money. So a beautiful head. Yeah, so it didn't work. But the only good part was like you look like a fucking creep. Yeah, yeah. Well, that too. Hey, hey little boy. But then the Dodger cap. <laughs> Dad, the, you, what are you a three? Dad comes back in like you fucking what, you little piece. Yeah, of Yeah, I didn't shit. even think you about that part. Kid. But then it was cool though because a couple single moms came in right before Christmas and I just fucking hooked them up, man. Free I could spanks, tell. Ladies, I was Free just spanks. like whatever you what your son need. And I gave. I felt like Robin Hood or like Santa. So I got fired from that job and then I went to work at Dillard's. Well, how did you get fired from the pizza place? Oh, I just didn't show up for work. The pizza place was the first place, and then but that's what made me want to run the mafia because I'm, these guys came <laughs> from mafia Italy. I, these guys are like full Italian dudes, and they came from New York out of nowhere. They opened this pizza place, so it's like four brothers, and then the dad would come in who was just like this, looked like a mob boss, and he would come in on like Sundays and just chill. We worked in a pizzeria that had like six cameras, which made no sense. So I have no idea what was going on, but we, I mean, like we'd shut down when Italy was playing soccer. In the middle of the mall. The mall would be like, you guys got to stay open. It's like Tuesday at like 3 o'clock. They're like, no. Roberto Baggio is playing. It was like, so then I got obsessed with this mall, the, the mafia. I wish real quick. I wish the tape that fell out of Mike Tyson's uh, Louis Vuitton out of it. <laughs> I wish it was just a security tape of the uh, Parkway pizza. Of me at Parkway yeah. stealing pepperonis. You were, like, you were like, am I in the Truman Show? Why is there a tape of me working at a pizzeria at Mike Tyson's house under the ottoman? Sorry. That, that would have freaked me the fuck out for that sure. That would have been cool as hell. So, yeah, so then I got a job at Dillard's, and then the people at Dillard's were just... Because Dillard's, they came in from, like, some big city and put this Dillard's in, and uh, they just treated us like shit. So, like, I had a name tag. My name's right on my on my coat, and the guy would just call me boy and hey, kid, and just talk shit to me, and I was like, all right. So then I devised a plan in the men's department. The boss did. Yeah, the boss was just an asshole. So there was no cameras in the whole place. There was just an on-duty Cheyenne police officer. But the the police officers thought that job was just like oh Cheyenne yeah that's what they're getting racist no <laughs> so they thought <laughs> they thought that job was just a bullshit job so they would uh you know they'd take like two hour lunches or they'd just sit up at the makeup counter and try to fuck the makeup chicks so we had it easy <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Fuck. <laughs> that's what they would do Didn't blush and shit yeah they'd just be sitting hey. there talking to them so then I started this whole thing and just we just started once I got everyone in the men's department on board. You know, one person would be lookout to see if the cop, wherever he's at. And then it was, we were just robbing everything. So, because all my friends were black and they had no money. And it was like when Tommy Hilfiger and Nautica. Black guys in Wyoming. Yeah. Well, that's what no one ever believed, but there's an Air Force base there. Oh, okay. So the rest of Wyoming, there's no black people. But, uh, so all my, <laughs> my boys were black and they were broke. So I was just hooking them up. So we're just getting everything. And then all of a sudden one day there's this dude just shows up and he's just lurking around the men's department for like hours and i was like this is something's up here you know no one sits in dillard's for hours because dillard's didn't really sell anything because there's a target right next door 
So they're selling like $70 Ralph Lauren shirts, and there's a polo shirt at Target for $7 across the street. We're in Wyoming. No one fucking cares about that, except for me. I started wearing polo, so I robbed every – I had every polo shirt color, <laughs> like four polo belts. I'm like a dude making maybe nine fifty with like a $70,000 wardrobe. Polo, polo belts is the, <laughs> Everything. the boss like, move, man. All of them. I, I ran out of polo shit to steal. I had it all. So <laughs> <laughs> You actually got a polo pony. Yeah. So uh, – <laughs> So then one day this this dude just lurking around the men's apartment, and I knew something was up. And then uh, sure enough, they called me over the loudspeaker like, Brent Tobler, please come to the office. Oh, now they know your name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I had that moment of like, man, I should just walk out the door and get the fuck out of here. And then, But then I had that other moment like, I'm the fucking boss of this. I'm, fuck these guys. I'm a cop out of cop yeah, out of the mafia. Yeah, I watch way too many movies and shit. So I, I go to the office, and I, I walk in the office, and there's a big, long like uh, table – like for meetings or whatever. So there's there's on on my there's one chair on this side. It's just me. Then on the other side, there's the head of the store, the head of the men's department, that guy that had been lurking around the men's department who was lost prevention that they flew in from Arkansas, and then uh, the police officer. So I sit down and they're like, and the boss was just a dickhead. And he just starts telling me. He just starts going, uh, if you just tell us the truth, it'll be easier on you. Like you tell a little kid and he's just like, if you just tell us the truth, we're not going to, it'll be in your advantage. And I was like, I'm not, I don't know nothing. Like my dad was in prison the whole time I was a kid and really didn't teach me anything. But the one thing he ever said was don't snitch on yourself or anybody else. So I was just sitting there like, uh, I just said, I don't know nothing. And then they're like, we know, you know, if you just tell us. And I'm like, I don't know nothing. And then they were like, he goes, well, we saw your girlfriend walk out of here with two bags the other day. And without hesitation, I was like, well, why didn't you arrest her then? And they were all looking at each other, and they're like, well, we saw I was like, well, why didn't you arrest her if you saw that? Yeah. And they're like, they look at the cop, and they're all, you know, like dumbfounded. But then he goes, so then he pulls out these letters. And when you're at Dillard's, if someone came and bought something, you were supposed to send them like a thank you letter and like try to start a relationship so they keep coming in and buying shit. Well, no one was buying shit from me because I was just giving shit away to everybody. So, But my buddy had just joined the Navy. So I was using these letters to send to him. Well, I thought they were going to him, just telling him about I'd just start getting laid and shit. So I was just writing these awful letters about eating <laughs> pussy and shit. <laughs> so these guys took them all and they read them all. So he pulls out these letters and I'm like, oh shit, what did I write in there? And on the bottom of one of the letterheads, it had like the Dillard's imprint in it. And I just wrote, I am robbing. And then the Dillard thing was already on the paper there, blind. You're not going to believe how much shit I have. So I write that on there. So he goes, well, what's this? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I was like, that's from when I worked at Sports Fan. I got the, the Dillard's part was just there. I just forgot to write. You know, we both know we're both lying. And I'm just like, and he's and he starts pounding on the table. He's like, boy, you're gonna be in so much trouble. You don't tell the truth. We know what you did. He's like, the store is 1.3 million short inventory. We know what you guys are doing. And I'm just like, oh shit. So they just keep yelling at me to to say something. So then at one point I was like, all right, I just got to make a stand. And I and I stood up and I was like, I'm done. Either fire me or arrest me. And he's like, sit your ass down. I was like, nope, fire me or arrest me. And I started walking towards the door, and he's like, sit back down. So then I sat down, and they all went out of the room. And now I'm just sitting there by myself, just fucking scared, shaking, you know. And uh, then after like 10 minutes, he came in just bright red, sat across from me, slid this piece of paper to me that said, uh, I could never go in another Dillard's in America. And I was, <laughs> and I was, uh, and I was fired for mail fraud, sending out personal letters on company stationery or whatever. But they didn't pop you for no. So then I got up and they, they paraded me around the store. Like I was embarrassed or something, but everyone knew I was like the fucking cool king. man walking. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, uh, got to the door. Then I got to my car and, you know, drove like a block and pulled over and fucking hit me like, Oh my God, I could have, cause in there they're like over $500 is a felony. You know that. Right. And I was like, God, we had fucking. I had five hundred dollars worth of clothes, probably in my car that I stole from there. How much do you think you stole total from Dillard's? Well, they said their inventory is one point three million off. Now, I I don't think that's all ours, but from what we took, I mean, I'm telling you, what I mean, just my wardrobe alone. I'm not exaggerating. Like the retail price, I probably had like seventy thousand dollars. I mean, I had just put you polo in for like five years. Yeah, I would have been in big trouble. You we would all would have been. You would have seen your dad. I would have saw my dad, maybe. Finally. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately. Made. So we, uh, yeah, so we got out of that. The mafia, I retired after that. So no more mall. Fear. No, 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 no more malls, malls for me. That's the last time I had a job in my life. So if I had to get a job, I'd have a bad reference from there, a bad reference from sports fan, 
and Parkway. I don't think I could get a job. If I literally applied at McDonald's, they'd be like, well, you haven't worked in like 17 years, and your three employees say you're a piece of shit that's stolen yeah, from Yeah, but bro, them. you could fucking cut a calf's balls off. Well, that's true. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> no, I fucked yeah, that job up to too. The- I snuck out of there and left after an hour or so. The moral of the story is I'm a shitty employee. <laughs> wow! Oh, wow! Seventy-five thousand dollars in wardrobe just for you. I had so. I mean, I, that's just a guess, but I had so no, much but that's polo a, stuff. Like you just said, like a twenty-eight, a seventy-dollar, twenty-eight-dollar shirt. Well, no, it was like a seventy-five-dollar shirt. You know, that, that's probably a little high. Let's say it's a hundred-dollar shirt. But I had every to, color. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to add up to seventy-five large. That's yeah, a ticket, I, I, you know, seventy-five. The more I think about it, it was large, because I know how podcast people be like, "Well, they you to fucking." What I'm saying is I had a fucking monster wardrobe. It was, I probably had, went bye-bye for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I had everything you could have. That If you go into Dillard's and you walked around the polo store, the polo section, I had one of everything you'll see. When they brought in the new shit, you were like, come to Oh, God, I fucking loved it. It's like a, Why was your dad in jail? My dad went to prison like when I was a kid for like drugs, mainly drugs. Uh, how how like, long was he in your whole life? No, he would get in and out. Like he was in Leavenworth when I at, when I was a little Jeez. kid. Yeah, my mom told me he was in college. It was so funny. I thought my dad was in college this whole time until I was like twelve. But then my dad would get like spring break, is what we thought it was. But he would uh, <laughs> he would get out like every two or three years, and then he would just show up and fucking come to town and fuck everything up for. Not for me. He would just come spoil us, like you know, like a dad that doesn't. He would show. I would be like ten years old, and I'd go buy two fitted hats and have two hundred dollars, like because I didn't have pockets, like up in my like a ten year old. My dad didn't know, you know, and just made it hard on my mom and stepdad because my dad, my mom and stepdad are working hard and trying to have a regular life, and my dad would just come in town and throw money at us and fucking. And you probably us. wanted to go live with your dad because every time you saw him, he was giving yeah, you money. Of course, and cash I thought he was cool the coolest sh- guy in the yeah, world. And your mom's like, uh, but everything he did now in hindsight is like the worst. He you would wouldn't just, like daddy's house; it has bars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I never got to that point. So he was, so he was in and out of prison the whole time till I was like thirteen, and then he was in prison for a long time. I never saw him. I, I was, I'm trying to think about it. last time I saw him before this was like 13 or 14. And then, so I'm living in Phoenix and I get a letter in the mail from my dad saying, Hey, I'll be out of jail. I'll be in Phoenix. Is that creepy that your dad knows your address out of nowhere? Yeah. Well, I figured he got it from my mom or oh, okay. at that point I still talked to like my grandparents and people on that side. So it was, he, I knew he could get it. I don't know who got it to him, but, uh, so then he sends me this letter, like, I get the letter on, let's say, like a Tuesday, and it's like, hey, I'll be – I'm getting out of jail. I'll be at the Phoenix airport on Friday at, like, 1 o'clock. I'd love to see you. There's no time to write back or anything. If you if you could be there, great. I'd love to see you. So I'm like, yeah, of course. So I go to the airport, and this is when you could still go in the terminals and everything. How old are you at this time? 20, maybe. So I go to the terminals, and I'm walking around, but I don't know what my dad looks like. It's, oh. like, one of the weirdest things. So I'm walking around, like so, – so I'd peek into, like, a bar in the airport, like, is that my dad? So then I finally see my dad, and then, then I knew it was him because we look, you know, alike. Except for he's got like a ponytail, and she, like he's prisoned out, like coming out of prison. And uh, so I see him in the airport, and we talk, and he's like, "I want to be a part of your life, blah blah blah." And uh, I'm moving to Vegas. If you ever want to come to Vegas, you know, I just miss you. I want, I want to be a part of your life. And at this point, I was going to college to try to play basketball at a junior college, but I was like, I fucking hated college. So literally a week after. I met my dad in the airport. I was like, fuck it, I'm moving to Vegas. And I tell my two buddies, and we came up with a dumbass plan because I was 20. I got to put my – now I got to put a number <laughs> in here. Now Now you got me thinking about it. But because this is how dumb, our, this is how best, dumb our plan was, was that we were, best, we were going to go – we want to be pirates at Treasure Island. That was our fucking <laughs> game plan. <laughs> <laughs> that we were Maddie's <laughs> eyes lit up. That's his lifelong fucking uh, dream. Uh, oh we my it, god! You are you serious? Seen Maddie's face. He was like, "What?" Well, well bro, I mean, like, the, you know, greatest the, job in the world. Diving off the shit into the water and with all a that. bunch of hot chicks. You do it like once an hour. Yeah. We didn't know anything about casting or anything. We're idiot kids from Wyoming. We're like, we'll just show up and tell them we want to be pirates, not knowing you have to fucking show up at, dressed as pirates. Yeah, and have rent. muscles and shit, and yeah, just yeah. like be an actor, or whatever. So we get there and. uh <laughs> So we're living with my, my dad, of course. I don't even know how he set this up, but when my dad gets out, so he's living with a cocktail waitress in like nice. a trailer park. Jeez. So we move into this trailer park, and we're like nine deep in this trailer park. Fucking, But it was cool. Like everything, it was You and your buddies, your dad and his cocktail waitress. But go. then her kids, and some, her, one of her son's friend lived there. I mean, it was literally, it was fucking all of us. And then, but it was cool. And uh, so everything's good. I mean, this my This is da- better than college to you. 
Oh, it's way better. I hated college. College was a fucking joke. I, yeah. I was going to a shitty junior college, you know? I was Somebody only going to college. Said to me, how, how smart could it be? Everybody's reading the same books. Yeah. <laughs> that stuck with me when I was, like, deciding whether or not I wanted to go to community college. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Everybody and was. I made it a point, like, not go, after I didn't go to college and I was doing stand up, I made sure I read, like, the most different, bizarre, like, battleship books and fucking Maya Angelou. Like, I, I was like, everyone's reading the same books in college, man. I thought I was hot shit. Which is not true. Everyone at college is. Not reading three hundred dollar books. That's my college experience. Buying these fucking expensive books for like three hundred fifty dollars for a textbook. I would never. I would just sit in my car or or in my house and be like, "They told me how to buy this book for this stupid fucking class. The book's like one hundred eighty five dollars. That's like twenty meals for me. Why do I have this stupid fucking book?" So I'm just over college. I dropped out. I was like, "I'm out of here." So we're living in Fe- I mean, in Vegas, and things are up and down. And then I get a somehow a miracle get this credit card out of uh i don't even know how i got a credit card there's no reason i should have but i like this five thousand dollar credit card and i want to continue to play basketball so i joined this gym in in vegas and it's like a high end it's like a hundred dollars a month gym way back in like 2000 which is like expensive for yeah, yeah. a gym you know so i'm like fuck it i got That's it expensive now yeah yeah so i joined this incredible gym and i started playing basketball and and uh the dude there's one dude who's like the the head of the basketball courts and so at lunch it's all professional gamblers playing but there's one dude that i kind of gravitated toward because i knew he was like the coolest dude so i started talking to him and then one day he's like yeah i'm a professional gambler and i was like holy shit what's that like you know and because everyone i could tell he was like a millionaire and shit so he starts telling me and then over like two or three weeks he tells me one day i go hey man just tell me who you bet he's like ah don't bet man just don't do it trust me and then one day he finally broke down and he goes i'm gonna tell you four games don't tell anyone in the gym don't tell anyone. Go bet these games, but don't tell anyone I told you. So like a fucking dumbass kid, I run home and tell my dad, like, yo, he gave us these games. These games can't lose. We're going to fucking win. So my dad gets borrows a bunch of money from the cocktail waitress. I had saved up like $1,200 to move home and be with my girlfriend in Wyoming. We're like, we'll bet all this money. We're going to have so much money. So, of course, all four games fucking lose. Do you remember the teams to this day? No. They but say the, you always remember the bad beats. Oh, well, I'll tell you, though. I, I do remember one game. I had so many bad beats by now. But uh, so... <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, I remember my worst bad B is, is it's called my dad. Uh, so oh. I, uh, uh, so I go. I have to go back to work, and I'm working in the shitty ass casino off Boulder Highway, counting money in the middle of the night from like eleven to like seven in the morning, emptying slot machines and counting the money in this back room, which is the worst job when you're broke, just sitting counting money. I'm in my head. I'm just thinking, how the fuck do I rob this place? But you can't rob a casino. It's not like a Dillard's, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Eventually, make polo money? after like three weeks, I I finally I go back to the gym and I see the boss. I see my guy and he's like, "Hey man, did you bet those games?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "I'm sorry, man." He goes, "Come to lunch with me." I go, "All right." So we go to lunch and then when we go to lunch, he's like, "You want a job?" I was like, "Nah, man. I'm gonna move home probably. I miss my girlfriend." He goes, Are "You sure?" And then uh, then he told me what the job was and I was like, "Holy shit!" So he goes, "Go with Tony today." So I. I leave. To, I get in Tony's. BMW. I've never been a BMW or anything. I think it's like the coolest thing in the world. We get in this BMW. We drive down the strip. We go to Bally's, and he hands me twenty thousand dollars. Like I said at the time, I've only had Whoa. maybe eight hundred dollars in my life. He goes, go in there and bet Duke football. And this is like two thousand when Duke didn't win a game right. ever. They're like plus thirty seven. I'm like, why would we bet Duke football? Are you crazy? Bet twenty thousand dollars on Duke football? And and he was like, I'll never forget. He just stopped me. He goes, there's one rule to this job. Just always fucking do what you're told. And I was like, okay, I got it. And I went in there, palms just sweaty. I had $10,000 in each pocket, like fucking shaking. I go up to the counter. I bet Duke football, you know, can I have 20000 on Duke plus 37 or whatever? And they give me the ticket. And then, uh, of course, it got smoked. It lost. The game lost, of course. But uh, So then from that day on, he trained me for like a week. So they lost the bet. Yeah, yeah it got killed. We shouldn't have took it. But, uh, you were I did, right. Yeah, but I, I was so wrong in the long scheme of it. Who playing? Uh, Florida State. It's amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. So then, from, I love that you remember it. Oh, You're I, the best. I could remember awesome. like the date, and then uh, this so, is what more stories should be every goddamn <laughs> week. Yeah, Our guy sits crazy. down, takes out his goddamn rifle, and doesn't stop shooting until the hour's up. Boom. Yeah, You're the so, fucking best. Well, it gets bad here. So then, uh, so I'm working. So it's crazy. I get to go home every night with all all this money. And I'm living in the trailer with my dad and everything, and it's like uh, <laughs> you're felon dad. Yeah, yeah. So, so at this point, my little brother is lives in Portland, and he's just chilling up there. And and I was like, you should come down and live with me and dad. 
we'll have this little family thing, you know, and my, my brother's on board, my dad, everything. So I get this house, like on the golf course, rent us a house, move my little brother down. Everything's cool. You know, it's me, my dad and my brother. We're having fun every night, drinking beers, having dinners, like real bonding shit. Well, then my dad gets off parole and these little fucking gangster kids start coming over. Now at the time I'm like 23, my brother's like 21. These little like white gangster kids, like 20 year olds, like scum, like white dudes that think they're black, like the worst dudes to ever be around. My dad who's like maybe 50 at the time starts bringing them over. So we're like, what's up, man? And then, so we, we kind of had an idea that he was getting back on drugs. And then, uh, so one day I work at college football Saturday. I work from like seven in the morning to seven at night, just running up and down the strip. So I'm exhausted. I come home, I get to the house. No one's there. Just me and my dad. I'm like, yo, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. You know, I'll talk to you tomorrow, dad. And he's like, you know, kind of tweaking or whatever. I, I, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm just like, whatever. So I go to sleep. Then at about 1130, uh, my brother wakes me up, comes in my room, and he's panicking. He goes, someone stole my money. And I'm like, oh, shit. My little brother had saved up like $350 to fly home to see his girlfriend graduate from college. In Portland. Yeah, so I fucking pop out of bed. I'm like, these little fucking gangsters stole my brother's money. You know, I run downstairs to try to find my dad and say, you better get this fucking money back for, for Ryan. And uh, so I go downstairs, go out in the front yard. His car's gone. Then it hits me like, oh, shit, I got money in my room, too. Sprint back upstairs, get to my room. My dad stole 80000 from me. How much? 80000 Holy shit. So now, no, that and that's money. my boss's money. Yeah. So now I'm sitting there, and I'm like, so then over the next couple of days, my dad comes home, and he says he didn't steal. We know he stole it. He's just saying the most fucking awful things to me and my brother. My little brother's like the sweetest dude in the world. And I see my little brother just crying. Every He's just sad, and I was like, you know what? And I had to go in front of my boss who was like my hero and tell him that my dad stole the money so i see my little brother crying all the time and then once again not the smartest dude i'm only 23 years old at this moment but this is my plan is that uh i know my dad's deathly is deathly uh um, allergic to penicillin so as a dumb 23 year old i come up with a plan that we're gonna fucking get a jamba juice and fill it up with penicillin kill my dad yeah so i call my cousin in in phoenix who's like a gangster like a real gangster and very loyal and he knew what's up and he's like i'll be up there in a day so my cousin comes up from phoenix so we make this plan so i fly to estes park with my girlfriend say you guys take care of this shit and i'll be back estes park is in wyoming no in colorado just okay. right below so then i go to estes park you guys handle this shit they're like we got it so they get the jamba juice put penicillin and all that shit they try to give it to my dad of course my dad doesn't take it because at this point, we're natural enemies. I don't think he knew there'd be penicillin in it, but I think he probably thought we pissed in it or something awful. So they try to give him the Jamba Juice full of penicillin. He won't take it. They trap him in the garage, and they try to kill him with fucking golf clubs. But who, my, my brother and cousin Ryan, try to... Ryan, your sweet yeah, brother. Yeah, when Kato... And your gangster My brother. cousin Kato. Yeah, cousin. So they so try the to... gangster and the sweet kid. They're they, trying to beat They the try to kill him in a garage. Them. And my dad, like I said, my dad was in Leavenworth, so he gets out of the garage... And then uh, I never spoke to my dad since that day. From that from that day on, oh, I don't know where he's at. I think he's in shit. Vegas, but with eighty grand though, and huh, of, he blew that shit. Lumps. He blew that shit. Fucking two days after he stole it from me. I thought you were gonna say you went and spoke to your boss, and your boss is like, laid down "No, my it. boss was the greatest." He, you know, in that business, people a lot of crazy shit happened where people ran off with money, and I think part of it was my dad was kind of relationship was jealous of the relationship I had with my boss. So my boss was like the coolest dude in the world, and it didn't help that when I got the job, my boss's partner was like in Kentucky. So when he came back, he's like, he thought I was FBI. So for like the first three weeks, I had to hang out with him every night because his my boss's partner was like, so this broke ass kid from Wyoming just shows up at your hundred dollars a month gym with some fucking sob story and some girlfriend and all this shit. He's already got a job at the Klondike or whatever. So for like the first three weeks, I had to I'd spend every night hanging out with. With my one boss, with both my bosses, to prove that I'm just some fucking dumb kid, not if FBI. If you were an FBI guy, you'd have to go home eventually. Yeah, well, if I was FBI, they thought I was setting them up because they'd already been in trouble. Well, how do you prove you're not FBI just simply by hanging out? Well, they just knew I was a dumbass after like two weeks. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think they just are like, Jesus I don't have like this a. Guy's certainly not in the. Yeah, I think they're like <laughs> this dumb. dude's trying to fucking get hookers. I like, like, I think they just figured out. Or I, I would a better way of saying is I gained his trust, I guess, and then the, then him saying I'm a dumbass. But uh, so then he got over that. You know, and then so I had to go to my boss, which was the worst thing in the world because I didn't want to disappoint him. He literally changed my life. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And, and uh, I just remember just crying 
in my car going in. I knew I had to go tell him. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do is just because I never wanted to disappoint him. But he was cool about it. And then he like pretty much took me in as a son at that point because he had three boys that were like 16, 14, and 12. So then I got to hang out with – I stayed with him for a little bit. And then they ended up uh, – we ended up just getting a house that we worked out of. We would just rent a house and then everyone would work out there. They would take their mistresses or whatever. It was a house you could do whatever you wanted. But I got it. I had to put it under my name, which is the greatest thing too because I have no credit or anything. So I would go try to rent a house and they'd be, I'd be like, hey, we want this house. It's like $3,000 a month. And they'd be like, okay, you got to fill out this paperwork. I'd fill it out and they'd be like, uh, Mr. Tobler, you don't qualify. You can't get this house. And I'd call my boss. Be like, They said I can't have it. He goes, well, it's 3000 a month, 3000 deposit. Tell them we'll just bring 40000 cash tomorrow. Pay for the whole thing up front. I go in there and say, "Hey, I know I didn't qualify, but we'll just give you, you know, we'll pay three thousand dollars a month. Then we'll give you three thousand dollars for the deposit and just another thousand for the convenience." They're like, "Mr. Tobler, you have a house." <laughs> you just balled out. Yeah, yeah. And then I had the house, which was great because then we'd work out of it. But then everything was expensed there, so I'd go shop for the house, the phone, everything. At the end of the week, I would just put it all on expenses, and then I just was making so much money, like. It was just the, it was the greatest thing in the world. I'd never had any money, and then the next thing I know, I had seventy thousand cash just under my bed and shit. Like I was living this. How crazy. do you stop working for an organization? Well, it all ends. So I have a falling out with my boss over just dumb shit, and then he the poker, dumb shit like what? what it's the same way we fell in love with each other. We I, I we became close playing basketball because I was good and he liked to win, so we won. But then as time goes on, we play against each other. We end up getting fights like on the basketball court, just stupid male macho shit. And then he he started dating a girl, and then he and then the poker boom took off. And I was pro- I, it's one of those things. I really don't know what happened between us, but it went bad for a little bit. So then I started working for this other dude. So then I was broke, and then I got out of it. But long story short, so then I start working for these other guys. These young dudes come to town, and my boss got me a job when I needed it the most. I had no money, buried oh Before people you money. Completely fell apart with your boss. He yeah, still no, I completely fell apart with my boss. Pretty much, I got robbed at shotgun. Everything bad happened. My whole life is shitty. My dad, after I haven't spoke to my dad, he steals my identity, so I can't even get credit cards or anything. I have, I'm fucked. I literally have no money. My buddy's taking care of me, but somehow my old boss came through because these young dudes came to town and they like give X a job because my name. Everyone called me X in Vegas because when you're gambling, everyone has no one uses their real name. So these dudes call call me up one day and they're like, "You want a job?" And I was like, "Cool." And uh, they were these young dudes, super smart, like computer fucking geniuses, but they didn't really know about gambling, so they sent me out on the street. But they didn't know what they were doing, so they would be like, "Go bet all these games." And then at this point, people had ran off with hundreds of thousands of dollars. So at this point in the job, I would like, if you were my boss, I'd come here before work. You'd give me the money. We'd check it out. I'd be like, okay, I'm leaving with 173000 Then at the end of the night, I'd have to bring that money to you, check it back in. Because over time, people kept fucking up with the money. But these guys didn't know what they were doing, so they would send me out and have me bet. And then they, they, they were like fat dudes. They loved to eat and shit. And then I'd be like, hey, I'm coming back. They're like, ah, just come tomorrow. We're going out to eat, man. But what they didn't know was... I'd bet all those games, and I didn't know they didn't know how many times I bet a game. So if I bet the Bulls five times for five thousand dollars, I would go back and just turn one in, take the five thousand dollars for me, put the five thousand dollars back in the bankroll, and then tell them I only bet it four times the next day. So I literally was like buried, owed a bunch of people money, and after like two and a half weeks, I had like seventeen thousand dollars cash under my bed. Everyone paid off. I was just balling again, but I couldn't really show it. See, that's a part of the problem is like. My first boss, I never robbed. He's he's like a dad to me. Now the second, and third boss, of fucking, a lot of crazy shit happened. Where I I felt like these guys are millionaires, and I didn't think I was getting the money that I should. Right. So then I started making money on the side, and then a lot of bad shit happened. But I couldn't really show it because people were like, "Why don't you buy a Range Rover or something?" I was like, "Cause my boss knows how much he pays me. Right. I can't show out. I got it. You know, I take trips and shit." But at this point, I fall in love with this girl who's loaded. So she's the perfect alibi. Like her uncle owns like a baseball team, like crazy money, drives a brand new range and everything. So then I introduce her to my bosses. So then the I could ro- fat nerd guys. Yeah, I could rob my bosses, but then just say my girlfriend was paying for everything. So literally, I was my girlfriend's in Barcelona. I'd fly to Barcelona for the weekend, fucking go to Italy. Like well, I remember one time to sum up how much I was balling. It was like a, <laughs> it was like a Friday in morning. It was like a Friday morning, and then I was like, "What do you want to do?" She's like, I don't know. And we start just looking on the internet and fucking, she's like, oh, James Taylor's in Nashville. I've always wanted to see him fucking fly to Nashville. See James Taylor. Wake up the next morning. 
well, I've never been to Wrigley. Fucking fly to Wrigley, go to Wrigley. Wake up the next morning. Well, Counting Crows are playing in Milwaukee. Fly. We were just plowing because she had money and I had money. So we're living this crazy life. Fucking anything I want. And all my dreams. To anything I've ever wanted to buy. And then, so everything's going good. Now my bosses, they start talking to these girls from Thailand, like on the internet, like Skype, teaching them English and shit because they're going to bring home Thailand girls. <laughs> so it's the middle of the summer and... uh and I'm just spending money like it's make believe, and my, I'll never forget. My boss is like, "Yo," because they had built this new computer program. They're like, "We're gonna make so much fucking money next year," and I was like, "That means I'm gonna make so much money." Yeah, so I'm like, just tell me about plowing it. through my money. Yeah. And they go, "Well, we're going to Thailand to get these girls. We'll be back." Well, for whatever reason, one dude doesn't go. This dude, he's like bipolar and and has a bad back, so he's taking all this weird medication. Well, he freaks out in the middle of the night one night, calls his mom in Phoenix, says he's like crazy. His mom freaks out, drives up from Phoenix. We we work out of a big ass mansion and uh, in like a gated community. She gets in the gated community, but she gets to the door. No one will answer the door. She doesn't know what to do. Can't so, have the wall. So she goes. 